Diana, what do we have? Yeah, Adam Schefter just broke that the Kansas City Chiefs have now made two gigantic cuts, both of their tackles, starting left tackle Eric Fisher and right tackle Jeff Schwartz. These two are key players on this offensive line. We know that they didn't play in the Super Bowl. Obviously, Eric Fisher tore his Achilles right before, so he was unable to play in it. And Jeff Fisher was really working hard excuse me, Jeff Schwartz was really working hard to come back, and he said on Instagram himself that he was going to be 100% ready to go for this upcoming season. We talked last week all about this week being a really difficult week. We called it a massacre. At least one coach told me that, and that's what it is. Look at what the Kansas City Chiefs are doing. An offensive line that we knew was struggling in the Super Bowl because they didn't have those two guys, no longer on the team now. Wow. Yeah, you made that point last week, and now that the salary cap has officially been set where it is at $182.5 million, we will start to see these moves leading into next week. Eric Fisher, who was the number one pick in the draft, and Mitchell Schwartz is the other player that they released both of them. Teddy Bruschi, what's your reaction? We've talked about the most important position being the quarterback position all show long. The most important unit is the offensive line because they protect that. And so quickly, championship windows close. And when you have a quarterback like Patrick Mahomes, I mean, it, it's all about the protection. And you saw in the Super Bowl an example of that. So this is just a tremendous shot to that offense because now there's going to the trickle down effect is this. OK, you fill in guys, but they're not as good. So he takes a couple more hits per game and those accumulate over the course of a season. And then is he hurting in the month of December going into the playoffs? So there's a lot of trickle down effect based on these moves. Ninko, what's your, what's your thought here? All 32 team scouting departments are about to get a lot of pressure put on them, especially if they're in a situation where their cap is up against having to cut some of these key players. So they're going to have to go out and find young players through the draft that can fill these holes to where they don't have huge contracts. And at the scouting department are going to feel the pinch on this one because they're going to have to win in the draft. And Chris Canty, you know, to his credit, Hembo made this point to me yesterday on the radio that this offseason, being as unique as it is based on this, the teams that have salary cap space will have a disproportionate advantage. This is going to be different than any other year. They'll be able to really take advantage of this circumstance for exactly this reason, that players that otherwise might never get cut might wind up being out there. No, you're absolutely right. And if you're one of those players that finds yourself on the outside looking in when it comes to your current team, you're probably looking to set yourself up to be able to have an opportunity to get the contract, to get the financial security the next offseason when the cap rebounds. So uh, teams that have cap space, teams that are already competitive, talking about the Indianapolis Colts, teams that are in that mold, they're going to have a tremendous advantage because veterans are going to be looking to set themselves up and be in situations where they can be on a, a team that's actually competing to win a championship. And I just feel like that's an opportunity that teams like the Colts can take advantage of. Colts have a lot of cap space. Patriots have a lot of cap space. Let me get Diana back up here. Diana, for those who don't know this, give me, give me who are the teams that have a lot of space and who are the teams that are in real trouble here? Yeah, you, na you named a few there that are in good shape, but here's the thing. Historically, you always got to go back and look at teams and see what they do during these free agency periods, right? You have the Colts. No matter how much money they have, Chris Ballard's always going to be really smart and conservative with that. They're not going to overspend. They're, and traditionally, that's just not what they do. Same thing with the Green Bay Packers. They're not going to overspend. They're not, they're not in a position to spend a lot of money themselves, so they're going to have to be smart. But it is very true that the teams that have the money, they're in a good position. And, and here's the other thing, too, with these cuts, and this was actually pointed out to me from a head coach last week, is you have a lot of good players that a lot of these teams did not expect to get cut. So the free agency period next week, Greeny, looks very different than what a lot of teams were planning for. So a lot of good players are on the street now. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.